A Scottish lass saves the day, and to say thanks, I send her to meet country and western queen Dolly Parton. Plus, Matt Baker will be going undercover to give this Elvis fan the shock of his life. Dearly beloved, <laughs> we are gathered here today to celebrate someone very special. <laughs> and don't let her day job deceive you. <laughs> the lady we're about to meet has a 300 horsepower dream. Anybody have any idea what it could be? Well, well, here's the surprising truth as we go vrooming with the vicar. I'm driving through the beautiful Herefordshire countryside to surprise local vicar Susan Strutt. Now she dedicates her life to other people, but today it's all about her. 65-year-old Sue was one of the first women to be ordained in the UK. Now in charge of eight parishes, Sue's constantly thinking about the needs of her parishioners and her community. She is always available for anyone who needs her help. Daughter Jane explains why she nominated her. She's meant to have one day off a week but even that sometimes doesn't happen because her phone constantly rings and sometimes there's somebody that needs her attention straight away. And I just wanted to nominate her to give her a treat for herself because she gives so much to everybody else. I thought it'd be nice to give something back to her. So what kind of calm, spiritual dream does the vicar have? She's always wanted to rally drive and I know she certainly drives her car as though it's a, a rally car. <laughs> oh, rally driving, amazing. But husband David knows she deserves it. She's worked hard all her life. She's asked for nothing. She's asked for nothing for herself. She's my soulmate. I'm her soulmate. We've got no secrets, except this one. We're at Hampton Court Castle in Herefordshire. Susan thinks she's coming to this calm and peaceful and majestic stately home for an afternoon visit with her husband and her daughter. What she hasn't counted on is she'll be joined by Randy Bodine, a very loud and obnoxious and accident-prone American tourist. <laughs> Randy Bodine. Oh my, come on. That's right, it's Randy Bodine. Don't mess with Texas. <laughs> yeah, don't mess with a true Texas Longhorn. <laughs> Woohoo! Ride him, cowboy. They speak French here in the UK, toilet. We won't miss a thing as our secret cameras are everywhere. And the castle guide Sharon is in on the setup. It's here that I usually like to introduce you to an American millionaire whom I like to refer to oh, as our benefactor, for he bought the house in 1994. <laughs> Sounds like my daddy. <laughs> um, when Randy's daddy must be a rich man. I wonder if he could afford this vase. Um, if you just please um, mind the vase as you come by. Um, for it's a, an acquisition that we've only just recently got. This is a very beautiful room. Would they have had singing and things and minstrels in here? You would have had a jester at oh. some point or other. Some of um, my friends back home say I'm a bit of a jester because every time I'm in a space like this, there's an old song and take the stars at night are big and bright, uh, 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 deep in the heart of Texas. It's very loud, <laughs> very loud, it's very loud. There's always one on the tour. I think I can isolate him. <laughs> Call to reception? I wonder why. I'll be as quick as I possibly can. All right? Back to this vase. Did somebody say it was valuable? Here comes Randy. The Texan is like a bull in a china shop. Oops, Randy's on the flight back to Houston. Poor Susan Shock. Uh, wasn't that vase priceless? Everybody, our friend has just brought you a vase. Don't worry, Sue. Tonight's the night is about to make a full confession. I'm very sorry because it's not really me, Susan. It's all about you. Because I'm actually John Barrowman from BBC One's Tonight's the Night. And I am here to make your dream come true. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> The reason I'm here today is because everybody wants something special for you. I know you have a dream, and you want to rally race. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, yeah. I've arranged for you to race with rally driver Chris Meek. You're going to be wow. the vicar of speed. <laughs> 
to you. I can't believe this. Believe it. <laughs> Come on, Sue, you're a vicar. Believe. Next stop, Silverston and World Rally Championship driver, Chris Meek. Nice jumpsuit. Good looking, vicar. Uh, mind your glasses, Sue. <laughs> So, are you ready for your first rally experience here at oh, Silverstone? I am. I'm looking forward to this. Good. Chris is going to show Sue how it's done. Hold on tight! <laughs> Don't you hate Sunday drivers? I've never had a drive like that in my life. It's wonderful, actually. <laughs> I won't go as fast as that, I don't think. Sue, this is your big dream. Put your foot down, girl. Your shift is up here. Slightly nervous. <laughs> She's good. She's really good. Chris might just have a new teammate next year. It was brilliant. Scary. I just don't know what I feel at the moment. Thanks so much. If you have a dream, keep going, keep following it. You just never know. I'd almost given up on this one, but it came true, and you may be surprised one day. Born to be wild. Now, Susan, you said there that you were too old to do it. How does it feel now once you have done it? Well, I think I've got a new career ready for when I retire, really. <laughs> <laughs> I think dreams, you know, keep going. That's what I say. You're never too old. So you're going you're to drive like that down to the local shops? I have noticed that I take the corners a bit faster <laughs> <laughs> since I did that, yeah. Jade, how important was it for, you know, you to see your mum fulfil one of her dreams? Very important. Mum does so much for other people and for us as a family as well that she always puts everybody first but never herself and it was just important to um oh. sorry that's all right it was it's just important for her to fulfill a dream that was just for her and yeah well it so. certainly was just for her and we're yeah, glad that you got in touch with us but everybody out there watch those corners because she's coming <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen susan struts Uh, okay, I'm supposed to be on the other side. Uh, guys, if you'll excuse me, sorry. Sorry to break up the family moment. I just need to come past. Um, here we go. Still to come, singing legend Dolly Parton becomes a singing teacher, and yes, we've... Oh. <laughs> yes, we've got more from Britain's biggest boy band, The Wanted! Oh, no, I see, yeah, there you go. There you go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Listen, I've been nosing around in a lot of your uh, photo albums, and um, I found some classic wedding snaps. Uh, here's Linda and <laughs> Kenneth. <laughs> that is screaming 1970s! Oh. Here's another one. Here's Teddy and Alex. She's laughing on the wedding day. That's because she just found out what's underneath his kilt. <laughs> <laughs> this one was, it was such a sunny day, this bride wore shades in the church. Yeah. I mean, the sun was shining that day, but that's not the reason for the shades. Isn't that right, Jackie? That's right, yes. Yes. We've got a very, very special surprise for you tonight because your wedding didn't go exactly according to plan, did it? No, not at all. Jackie and James, husband James right here, you guys come with me. And you guys, take a look at this. The first time I really met Jackie and started to speak to Jackie, it was at Coventry Ice Rink. Uh, for, for me, it was almost love at, at first sight. You, know, you just get that thing in your heart where you think, oh, she's the one for me, and that, that's exactly how I felt. Jackie and I have been best friends, literally since the day we met. I remember Jackie calling me up to tell me she got engaged and she was absolutely over in the moon. She was so excited about it and she put so much planning and thought into the wedding itself. The night before the wedding, I had a phone call to say there'd been an accident in the house, that Jack had fallen from the top of the stairs 
Her face was very swollen and she had a black eye. Uh, it was quite a traumatic, but at that time I thought the, the wedding was de definitely cancelled. My daughter, she was crying all morning. Well, wouldn't you? <laughs> After all this planning, months of planning, and then it, your big D and it all goes wrong. I was totally overjoyed that she had turned up for the wedding, knowing what she had gone through. I think Jackie was in a lot more pain than she let on to anyone. I, I think she put on a very brave face. She still has nightmares about her, her big D and she really deserves to have a, a lovely night tonight. I want John to sing to her because the, the wedding day itself is something she doesn't really look back on with a, a lot of fond memories. Yeah, the, the, the special song for me is Sleep by Texas. It was our first dance together as man and wife. I hope you have a great night. I really love you to bits and you are always the one for me and I can't imagine my life without you. Well, that in itself it is worth the evening, oh, yeah? yeah? But how do you look back on that day, Jackie? I enjoyed the day, but it's not exactly what everybody dreams of to <laughs> get married, uh, wearing a pair of uh, sunglasses and having a big kicker. Now, James, did you enjoy your first dance? Uh, the first dance, uh, we didn't really enjoy. I mean, it was all a bit of a blur and we were just, it, it wasn't how it was meant to be. Your dream didn't go as well as you wanted, but we're gonna bring that dream back to life because Jackie, I'm gonna sing this song especially for you. Thank you. So you're genuinely surprised. Yes, I am very You much are. Sure, yeah. Is there anything that you would like to say to this secretive <laughs> lot behind you and, and, and the man who set it all up? Thank you very much for doing that. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Everyone, our black eyed bride, Jackie! We've got a show-stopping finale from the stars of the hit West End musical, Million Dollar Quartet. And the wanted are back. But first, a story worthy of an Alfred Hitchcock film. Stop it! No, not that one. Just imagine, you're in your favorite restaurant when a mystery man rushes in. What do you do? Well... If you're any smart of Sterling, you swing into action. Here's what happened when that man met Annie Smart. 